Not all carbohydrates are created equally. However, they do all break down into glucose and make it into the blood, which then provides your body's cells with fuel. So if the end point is the same, does it even matter what carbohydrate you choose to use in a race? Well, I think it's time to break down carbohydrates. Bananas, toast, pasta, sweets, gels, energy drink, cake, chews, rice, the list goes on. The choice of carbohydrate is huge and more complex than simply how it looks and tastes. That said, finding a fuel source that you like will be vital as we'll explain later on. But before we break down the different fuel sources and more importantly, the different types of carbohydrates, there's a couple of aspects you need to have dialed in with your fueling. And one is the amount of carbohydrate and the other, the format of the fuel that you like to take. Let's start by looking at the format of that fuel or food as it actually appears. Are you better off using gels? Is it energy chews? Is it carbohydrate drink or real food? There's a lot to consider and obviously you can use a combination of all but it needs to work for the event that you're going to be racing. So bear in mind how hot is it going to be? Are you going to be able to carry the weight of that food that you've chosen? How easy is it to open? How easy or how hard are you going to be working at that intensity and therefore can you choose or digest your chosen fuel. There's a lot to consider when it comes to the actual format, so to speak. So there is a lot to experiment with, but alongside that, you then need to consider the amount of calories that you need per hour, or be more specific, we're talking about carbohydrates here. Now, if you are doing an endurance event that's 90 minutes or more in length, you need to start to aim to make sure that you're getting in a recommended minimum of 60 grams of carbohydrate per hour, and you'll see elite racers aiming for 90 grams or more per hour. And if you are one of those people that's looking to really up your carbs or be at the higher end of a carbohydrate intake, you need to consider not just the format of what that food's going to look like, but actually look into what that carbohydrate is as our bodies will actually break down different carbohydrates at different rates, which we'll go on to explain in a moment. Okay, let's break down those carbohydrates and get a little geeky for a moment. In fact, I'm actually going to be roping in the help of some experts who talk about carbohydrates all day. Yes, I'm getting the expertise of the Precision Fuel and Hydration team. So, Andy, I'm gonna hand over to you. I'm sure that you've heard of the term glycemic index used when describing carbohydrates. It refers to how quickly your blood sugar will spike when you've eaten something. And typically foods that are say brown or more complex in nature, like brown pasta, brown rice, whole wheat products, they're gonna take longer to digest and sugar is gonna rise in the blood more slowly, keeping you feeling fuller for longer as opposed to sugars that give you a quick spike and potentially a crash. When it comes to general day-to-day -day health, we're encouraged to eat a lot more of the lower glycemic carbohydrates because they control your blood sugar in a flatter manner and also the extra fiber in there is really good for your gut. When we're looking at sports nutrition though, we want the fast releasing sugars and we want them to be easily digestible. So we're looking for high glycemic index carbohydrates as the primary thing that we take during exercise. Carbs can broadly be split into three categories, sugars, starches, and fiber. Sugars and starches are more easily digested, but whatever carbohydrate you take in, ultimately, to be usable in the body, it needs to be broken down and end up as glucose in the bloodstream. You still with Andy? Good, because quite simply, carbs don't stop at glucose. Along with glucose, we've got fructose, and both of these are what's called monosaccharides, which is the simplest form of carbohydrates because they contain one kind of molecule. And you could be forgiven for thinking that as long as you're getting enough carbohydrate in, in this simple form, it will all be absorbed at the same rate. But that's not strictly true. Glucose is absorbed the fastest in the body. It's, studies have shown that most people can absorb about 60 grams of carbohydrate in the form of glucose per hour and about 30 grams of fructose. Now that's because they use different pathways to get into the body and also because fructose requires processing by the liver to turn it into glucose so that it can be readily used. 
you might have heard of something called a two to one glucose fructose ratio. It's very common in sports nutrition products because that allows athletes to take 90 grams or potentially more of carbohydrate per hour with, it, with the ratio skewed towards a higher dose of glucose because it can be absorbed more easily and a lower dose of fructose. Put the two of them together and you get maximum absorption so that you can get the maximum rate of carbohydrate oxidization when you're exercising. More recently, people have been talking about another ratio, 1 to 0 0.8 glucose to fructose, which means the ratio of fructose is a little bit higher again. This is because there have been one or two studies that have shown it with very, very high levels of carbohydrate intake, some individuals might be able to absorb and oxidise more, but the jury's still out as to whether there's a major difference between that and 2.1. One potentially useful piece of information to understand when you're reading packets of food and sports nutrition products is what is in sugar, good old table sugar. Well, it's actually a disaccharide made of equal parts glucose to fructose in a one-to-one -one ratio. So as well as tasting nice and sweet, it's what makes it a very good base ingredient for a lot of sports nutrition because you're getting some glucose and some fructose already. As athletes needing fuel from food to quickly be broken down into glucose, into the blood and to make it to the muscles is key. But with all of that covered, you'd think we'd finish the video here, but not quite because complex carbohydrates still play a vital role in sports fueling. In fact, it's back to Andy to hear him talk about polysaccharides. Polysaccharides do have a place in sports nutrition because although a lot of more complex carbohydrates, think of the ones in your pasta or your rice, will take longer to break down and so will release more slowly into the bloodstream, there are some that can be released quickly as well. And a common one that's used in sports nutrition is something called maltodextrin. Now maltodextrin is basically a long chain of glucose molecules, more than 10 molecules usually joined together. But because you have an enzyme in your mouth that starts to break, maltodextrin down very quickly and because it can move into the bloodstream very effectively it actually acts more like a simple sugar even though it's complex. So you might be questioning why do we even need to use something like maltodextrin when we could just use glucose and fructose on their own and there are a couple of reasons. One is that maltodextrin behaves a little bit like glucose in that you can break it down with the enzymes in your mouth so that it moves into the bloodstream quickly and you get a, a blood sugar spike in a similar way you would to taking glucose on its own. Also, very importantly with sports nutrition, maltodextrin is way less sweet than taking pure glucose. And we know that from a palatability point of view, you're likely to consume less products if they're overly sweet. It's why we have them in the products in the precision fuel and hydration range. Well, a big thank you to Andy for all of his expertise, but that was a little too much chat about carbohydrates and sugar for me, so I've had to come indoors and find myself a cake. But I know we've gone into a lot of detail here, but don't get too bogged down on the complexities because basically our bodies need calories and you need to be just making sure that you're getting them in whatever way that is. And our bodies are very clever that whatever the carbohydrate is, it's going to break it down and end up as glucose reaching the muscles. Now that said, we have focused mainly on high intensity exercise and the fueling for that. But you do have a little bit more scope for experimentation and having more whole foods when it comes to longer or lower intensity events such as ultras or even multi-day events. And after all, there's only so much sugar that anyone can take. And if you're racing for a very long time, you might start to actually look for something a little more savory. But my intention today was to basically explain how you can optimize getting in that carbohydrate during whatever race you're planning on. To do let us know what your current fueling strategy is or what you're gonna try after listening to this one. And if you've got any more complex questions, well, please leave them in the comments section below and we'll pass them on to Andy and the team at Precision Fuel and Hydration. But hopefully you've enjoyed this. Give us a like if so. I've got some cake to eat. <laughs>